In the early 1900s, alchemist Schwoller de Lubitz presented a work called The Temple of Man. It demonstrated that the architects of the Luxor Temple used sacred geometry, which reflected the exact proportions of the human body. The temple at Luxor is dedicated to the god Neta Amun. Amun is the air and the breath principle and the voice raised in song. Operating walls can only be understood by combining the images carved on the other side of the same wall. The images interlock, enhance and complete each other. It is as if a single image or idea was etched partially on one side of a thick sheet of glass and partially on the opposite side. In the green bark of a mut, there are no figures visible and until you put in the transposition, which is the figures in red, on the opposite wall, then we can see people in the bark. In this same area, on top we can see Knum spinning on his potter's wheel, the car double of the king. And then in the transposition on the opposite wall, there is also the child's car sitting in the boat. It is said that Ra creates netters as his limb. This indicates that the netters are part of the car or the body of Ra, the double and the vital energy. Ta gave birth to the nine netters. Ta is found as the heart within the body and the tongue within the mouth of each netter. In Shrala's book on the king, he tells us that the king can wear the netter crown, allowing the netter's functional divinity to act and work through the king himself. Each of us also can access this king energy and therefore the netters. It is as if a single image or idea was etched partially on one side of a thick sheet of glass and partially on the opposite side. These three barks all move upwards along the trachea within the temple and you can see here that the poles bearing the barks are all at throat level. This means that they're all probably chanting and singing. Here is the bark close up of a mun where there are four sets of feet means that the voice here is vibrato and strong and at this point it turns to come through the pharynx and out the mouth. In this slide we can see that Amun's bark has got two levels of that which is being carried. There is Amun at the top and there is Horus below. Both are seen to be instructing the king in later situations. This bark sits across the passageway and then redirects the energy, the bark directing itself out the mouth, which means that the song language instruction is being projected. In this slide, Horus is seen to be instructing the king using a golden ank, and Amun is also instructing the mouth of the king with an ank. And this overlays the bark, where the bark has poles that are being born, passing through the mouths of both Horus and the king and Amun. All very accidental and synchronous, isn't it? But it conveys language, instruction, and the hawk-headed figure of Mentu shown here is a moral enforcer, much like Ares. He is quite a powerful figure and is giving moral instruction commands that must be obeyed. The king's training is being done upon two levels. Remember what is missing and what is in the center of the bark. Amun's instruction, Horus's instruction. Both are necessary. The divine breath, Amun, and Horus, the divine intention, from the third eye. Ah, divine breath, sacred language, exquisite and rapturous sound, communication of a sacred intention, quality, voice, life, power, grace, energy that comes in voice and communication. Here, the throat chakra and the third eye are the chakras ruled over by Amun and Horus.
In each of the hieroglyphs with Amun and the king, you will see that they communicate at three different levels. One at the head level with the hands or with the thorax and breathing, a rhythm there. And the metabolic level, which is where they actually are shown to be an active netter or a quiet and still netter. We can also see a wave-like interaction as the energy would flow up one arm, down where the hands are held together, up the arms and down the other arms through the king in the middle. Information is being shipped from the bearer's poles, being born if you like, and thought forms are being transferred through the feeling content upon which the ship is floating. The ancient Chinese have a saying that the heart is enthroned upon the tongue. So now we're going to look at all of the lower part of the west wall of this room too. And you can see two doorways, one made of anks, one which is square and one which is hollow. Three different ways in which the base level can communicate. To summarize, let's be pra pragmatic in our communication. Speak with love and compassion of both sides of the equation, good and bad. Here there are five slides where Amun is interacting with the king and it seems to be concerned with food offerings and providence, abundance and prayers of gratitude to Min and Amun for what, what has been received. This upper register has two rhythmic waves going through the arms and shoulders and throat chakra, modes of communication both physical and verbal. We have here on the upper register 13 netters all approaching the king, the alchemical secret king. This lower register is the undertone, has a lot to do with food, food shipping and storage and also the butchering and preparation. Here the White King, seen with a knife in hand, is actually sculpting sound as well as carving food. In this middle region, the milk of nurturing is showered over the King and Queen, provided for by the farmer, and returned as nourishment from Mut herself, the Queen nourishing the young child. The Red King is seen twice in the next set of windows and is very active in the second part. He's seen first sacrificing and then doing much of the great work. There is also a strong joint line at throat level which means that the intoxicating flowers required to develop the communication with Amun are the blue lotus flowers. Perhaps the exquisite fragrance of the blue lotus awakens us to the divine qualities of the sacredness of breath and life itself. The communication here is between the king and the netter Amun and each communication should be read and understood at three different levels, at the level of the head, the rhythmic section in the middle and also the ground level of what the feet and the legs are actually doing. In the dual overtones for the upper register, the alchemical king is being served by the 12-13 netters that are the hours of the day and these create the rhythmic cycles through their arms. The twelfth netter who comes to the alchemical king is Ta himself, the tongue within all netters. Our secret alchemical king needs to know this Ta, the divine sculptor, very well so that he may sculpt his language, song, prayers and appreciation to the gods themselves.